so last uh, few weeks we studied about uh, uh, many things about a type uh, anti type and all so this week uh, we are going to study one uh, type and anti type uh, in the bible a story uh, in the old testament uh, which has got uh, so many lessons for us uh, now and we all know as mentioned in romans 15:4 that what's our things uh, which are refer written of our time were written for our learning that uh, we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might may have hope that means all the things written in the old testament are written for our edification for our development uh, so it uh, it might increase our uh, faith and hope on the lord so we are going to study a small story that is mentioned in book of uh, kings this is about uh, a warrior uh, known as naman when definitely we would have heard this story even from the childhood you see naman was a captain of the syrian army he was a very great man and he was a man of valor and very you see a strong man and uh, because of him the syria you see had uh, won so many wars uh, and they had so come so many times upon israel and won so many battles uh, everything was well with uh, naman but except uh, one thing that uh, he was a leper let us read second kings 51 brother second kings 51 uh, okay brother now naman kept captain of the host of the king of syria was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the lord had given deliverance unto syria he was also a mighty man in valor but he was a leper but he was a leper so he had uh, everything you see but uh, because of leprosy uh, there was so much of uh, disturbance uh, Uh, in his family because we all know that a leprosy leprosy is not a small disease during uh, those days in older days uh, leprosy was a you see contagious disease it used to spread from people to people you see once the leprosy comes to a person uh, it immediately completely eats uh, is uh, you see uh organs uh, and the flesh uh, and uh, it loses its senses you need to take a pin and pierce uh, on the lep- leprosy infected area it uh, doesn't affect even if you boiling water also is poured upon it uh, it has completely lost its senses uh. so such was the leprosy condition in we read in the bible that the lepers were not allowed in israel they were cast out of israel similarly <clears throat> this king and uh, he had a wonderful uh, you see uh, warrior the captain his name is naman he was a uh, very you see uh, loved by his king but he had everything but he was infected with the leprosy once naman had attacked israel and taken you see a small child as a captivity to syria and one of the captives you see a girl was working as a maid in naman's house and she saw the condition of uh, naman and naman's wife how sad they were and uh, she could not uh, you see see the sufferings of her master you see and one day she told and she witnessed about her god to naman see verse 3 brother same chapter verse 3 okay brother and and the sriya and he said unto her mistress would god my lord were with the prophet that is in samaria for he would re- recover him of his leprosy he she witnessed about uh, her god saying if you were in syria sir if you were in samaria the prophet of israel would have cured you of leprosy 
Imagine these words uh, falling on the ears of uh, Naman, wife and Naman. Somehow, some hope, uh, you see, began to spring. Uh, those days, uh, these contagious diseases were not cured at all. Like, for example, if, uh, you see, imagine the condition of, uh, of the whole world just two years before. If Corona comes, uh, everybody will think that they will die. There was no cure, no, you see, vaccination, nothing. You see, so many people have died now. So that gave the hope uh, to Naman. Immediately, Naman told all these things to the king of Syria. And Syrian king he wrote a letter to the king of Israel saying, I am sending my best, uh, you see, captain to you. I am sending a lot of gold and silver. And close, uh, I request you to please cure him of his leprosy and send him back. Imagine, you see, uh, writing a letter to the enemy uh, and taking this uh, to the enemy land. Naman went straight away to the palace. You see, because he thought uh, that uh, a prophet uh, in such honorable condition would definitely live in palaces. Went right to the palace of uh, king of uh, Israel and gave him the letter. As soon as the king saw the letter, he began to tore his clothes. Because in those days, leprosy was no, you see, had no cure. It was incurable disease at all. And the king misunderstood, uh, thinking that uh, the king of Syria is seeking for an opportunity to attack upon them. Read with us. 2 Kings 5, 6. Brother. Huh. <clears throat> and he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee. Behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou my, my says recover him of his leprosy. Ah, that thou may recover him of his leprosy. And the king immediately, you see, tore his uh, clothes uh, and said, uh, you see, my God, can I make somebody alive? You see, can I do all these things? It is not at all possible for him. He began to tore his clothes. Sir. You see? And now read verse 7, brother. Huh? And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter and he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man thus sent unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Hmm. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh the a quarrel against me. So, immediately the king misunderstood that uh, he was seeing an uh, opportunity to attack Israel. And uh, this news about Naaman visiting the king's palace fell on the ears of Elisha. And as soon as Elisha heard this one, he immediately sent a message to the king. Why are you king? Are you so tensed and tearing your clothes? Sir? Send him to me. I will cure him of all... Uh, is uh, leprosy, so he may know that there is a prophet uh, of God in Israel. Verse 8. Then immediately, you see, Na Naaman is advised to go to the house of uh, Elisha. And immediately, Naaman and the entire chariots, uh, you see, the wagons, everything, they go to the uh, house of uh, Elisha. And then Naaman expected some great welcome, a red carpet welcome, a prophet would come and, uh, you see, welcome him and do some grand things and all. But nothing of such thing happened. Immediately as he went to the house of Felicia, a servant opened the door and gave him an advice. What is that one? That is read verse 10. Verse 10, brother. Huh? And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and the flesh shall come again to thee, ah. and that shall be clean. Thou shall be clean. He simply said, Go and wash thyself in... Huh? In Jordan, seven times. As soon as uh, huh? these words fell on the ears of Naaman, he felt very angry. Right about turn, he took his chariot back and traveled to this is Syria. And he wondered why these things had happened. I thought uh, a prophet was living in a uh, palace and nothing happened in the palace. There, if I go and show the letter, the king is still in the clothes. He's sending me to Auza Felicia. How's the village is so pity condition that did not even dare to come and see me, at least come and wish me, at least give some blessings to me, nothing. But he sends his servants and tell him to 
Tell me to go and dip for seven times in Naman. And as he was going, all these thoughts was, you see, huh? Huh? pondering in his mind. And he thought, am I so dirty that I should wash in River Jordan? There is a very dirty river. Huh? We don't have many rivers in uh, Syria. I will go and wash myself there only. And he began to leave Israel. Read with us. Verse 13. Mm. And his servant came near and spoke unto him mm. and said, My father, if the prophet had bid there do some great things, one day do not have done it, how much rather than when he said to the wash and be clean. Mm. Then his servants began to advise him, Master, you see, if the prophet uh, would have told some great thing, wouldn't he have done? Of course, you would, would have told to offer some uh, 10 bullocks, you would have done it. But he told, he told a very simple thing, just dip in uh, Jordan seven times. Why don't we try it and see? And Naman, you see, he was a captain. He also thought, I have seen so many things. I have tried so many things. Nothing has worked out. Okay. At least, let me try this one and see what will happen. And Naman, you see, dipped himself in the Jordan seven times. Read with the verse 14. Mm. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh became again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Aha, uh -huh. his flesh became like a flesh of a little child. He became clean. First time he dipped, nothing happened. Second time, not even 10% change. Third time, nothing happened. Fourth time, nothing. Fifth time, also nothing. Imagine if you go to a doctor, if, God, if the doctor advises us to take some medicine for five days, what will we expect? We expect at least some 1% or 10% reduction on the first day. If nothing happens, we will wait another day. And second day nothing happens, we will immediately change the doctor only. Because we will think our doctor doesn't know anything. We will go to other doctor and take other medicines. You see? But uh, Naman was a captain. Your decisions he had taken... He had taken a brand. You see, he was never needed to change his mind. So, sixth time also he dipped, nothing changed. Not even a fraction. You see, not even a iota also changed in him. Everything remained the same. But the seventh time, you see, when he rose, everything was gone. Totally gone. When he came up, he was so surprised and full of joy that his flesh became like a fresh, like a child. It seems. Imagine a baby, new baby, newborn baby. How the flesh will be? It was such was his flesh. It seems, dear brethren. So Naaman, you see, returned immediately back to Elisha's house and met him. You see, and I gave him all the gift. But uh, you see, huh? How much uh, gift did Elisha take, brethren? Huh? Mosabha, tell me, how much did uh, Elisha take? He didn't take any. Uh, nothing. You see, free of cost, free treatment is yeah. given. And uh, when Naman came back to his house, such a joy for him, you see, it was very heartily welcome. Uh, and uh, you know what Naman would have done for that child? He would have released her. He would have dropped her back to his family. You see, it was a blessed reunion. So, what lesson do we have? You see, seven dippings of Naman. You see, not one, not two, not three, but seven times dipping in Jordan. What does it signify? You see, leprosy is a yeah, spreads, disease that spreads easily. You see, it is a yeah, contagious disease. Similarly, sin. Sin is very contagious. You see, it spreads very easily. The whole world is affected by sin. Even if you prick it with any number of words, any number of God's sword also, nothing will happen because it is infected with leprosy. Such is sin. So, imagine you take a pour of hot water upon the skin, the infected area. Does it have any effect? No, similarly, sin. 
how much ever water you pour how much ever truth you pour it has not much effect upon the sinner okay it eats the entire body you see so the glory of god which god had given for the perfect man we lost the image he fell from the grace of god and lost that glory aha uh -huh. isn't it so adam was created perfect but once when he ate the forbidden fruit what happened sin and death enter into the world you see so adam lost the perfection you see adam and was given a beautiful kingdom and made a king of the earth you see he lost that entire kingship so this was so contagious it uh, not only fell upon adam and eve our uh, first parents but it came upon the entire world entire uh, world uh, were condemned to death that dear brethren so this spread very fastly you see just for a period of uh, adam lived for a period of 930 years uh, you see and how much generation uh, is a you see but in the first world we see that was very very rapid uh, sin and death uh, passed upon the whole world okay so leprosy in the bible means sin so seven means what if you see seven in the bible means complete there are more than you see four hundred scriptures which tell about seven 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 creative days seven days you need to work and sixth day uh, so six days you need to work and seven days you need to rest you see and uh, seven churches uh, seven candlestick uh, seven angels seven trumpets you see seven veils seven plagues so seven seven in the bible if you see it always signifies perfection the number of god you see therefore the seven in the bible always signifies you see the completeness so the seven dippings of nama represents the seven steps a christian has to take to be completely cleansed of sin and the first step is that faith you see we need to take this first step which is a very important step that is faith the bible says that without faith it is impossible to please god you see so we should have faith on god and that god has made a provision through christ to forgive all our sins this basic necessity each and every person should have who comes to christ should have faith on him that uh, his sin cleanses us from all so his blood cleanses us from all our sins therefore we read in first john 19 you see read with the first john 19 Was some brother there? First John one nine. Yeah, yeah, brother, I'm here. I'm just running my pages. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness mm. see this all happens in faith not literally not literally our sins are forgiven okay but uh, he cleanses us uh, he considers us that we are you see not sinners we are justified this is all by faith okay so next step the next step is the bible has a person you see has faith on christ and comes to christ the next very important thing you see he does is that he increases his faith and how does he someone increase the faith it is by studying the word of god you see he tries to know more about god he tries to know more about his savior you see all these things motivates him to read more about the bible spend more time in reading the scriptures understanding more about god therefore we did in acts 17 11 that uh, the brethren in bria you see they were more noble and the searched the scriptures daily you see they used to refer to the 
scriptures, the Bible daily and see if uh, what uh, the brethren a uh, priest uh, was according to the scriptures uh, and what is uh, God desire. See, read Osea 6, 6, brother. You can read from the screen. Osea 6, okay. 6. <clears throat> For I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. See, what does God desire? Knowledge. Uh, the proper knowledge of God. Uh, you see, the proper understanding of the Bible. Uh, uh -huh. And how did uh, Jesus uh, justify or justified before God? Uh, in Isaiah 53, it says, uh, by my knowledge, uh, you see, uh, shall my writer's uh, servant justify many. So God had given him the knowledge. So, and also Bible says that you should add uh, faith, uh, virtue and virtue, knowledge. So knowledge about the Bible is very important. Therefore, you see, Study of the Bible is very, very important. This is the third step. Eh? Sorry, second step. The third step, as we start reading the Bible and understanding more about the Bible, you see, we realize the more that we need to draw nigh to Christ. You see, that we need to forsake our sin, our sinful activities, you see, to you see, uh, show obedience to God. You see, so what are the sins? You see, we may take various examples. Uh, you see, disco, club, bar. You see, all these entertainments, uh, social media, spending hours to hours together. Uh, you see, why? Simply involving ourselves in sin. But a true Christian, you see, as he realizes uh, that uh, he has uh, more uh, understanding about the God in the Bible, he tries to understand his mind. And try to quit all these things uh, because these are not pleasing in God's sight. Uh, you see, then, you see, uh, he tries to become like Christ. Read, brother. 2 Timothy 2.19, brother. 2 Timothy 2.19. Okay, brother, I will read from the screen. Hmm. Uh, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. See, let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So that's the third step. The fourth step. First step is what? Is consecration. That means immersion. Immersion into Christ. You see, so Christ had already dedicated his life to God. But that one... He symbolized in a proper immersion at Jordan. You see, this is the step a Christian also has to take in his life. Not before, but after trying to cleanse off uh, his sinful activities. Uh, he tries to offer his body as a living sacrifice to God. How? Holy and acceptable to God. Romans 12, 1. You see, we all know yeah. that God used to never accept an unholy sacrifice. We are all sinners. So how will God accept? It is through Christ. That is the reason the first, second, third and everything are joined together. You see, linked together. As we saw now, a few weeks before, uh, 10 silver coins. You see, all the coins are related to each other. Similarly, each and every dippings are related to each other. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. What does Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, what he should do? Forsake himself. Mm, deny himself. Take up the cross and follow me. Deny his rights, uh, deny his plan, purpose, everything. You see, all these things we need to lay off uh, 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 for Christ's sake. Take up the responsibility for Christ's sake. Uh, you see, then that is the time that a man becomes a new creature. So that's the fourth step, immersion. Okay? Uh, then fifth step is walking. Uh, the fourth step, he did talking. That I will do this to the Lord, I will do that to the Lord, I will be like this, I will be like that. All those things, okay, good. But the fifth step is difficult. Walk your talk. Okay? So, fourth step I told, I will offer my body as a living sacrifice. But fifth step, practically offer it. How do you offer it practically? You see? See, we have 24 hours in a day. In 24 hours, so 8 hours we sleep, 8 hours we go to work. But balance 8 hours, what are we doing? In balance eight hours, how much I spending for the Lord's sake? Just kneeling down and praying, huh? or else 
Are we studying the word of God now? Eight hours is there. In eight hours, we need to take food and do some other activities and all. Okay. But what about the balance? What about the balance? Few hours you have. What are you doing for the Lord? Dear brethren, this is practically working. You try to save so much of time and dedicate for the Lord. You see, sit and understand more about his plan. You see, and try to quit all sins as possible. Uh -huh. Okay, now read. First John 2 6, brother. First John 2 6. Uh, sorry. Hmm. He that said he abides in him out himself also, so to walk even as he walked. Ah, you should walk even as Christ walked. What is his walk? His walk of life was a sacrificial walk of life. This was pleasing to God. Therefore, Apostle Paul says in Galatians 2 20. Huh? It is no longer that I live with the, it is Christ that live within me. This is practicing, practically walking. You see, in the first stage or second stage, a Christian might be having a very huge ambition to study huge, very high education and, uh, you see, earn a lot of money. But this stage, he will think, does it really glory my God? Does it really honor my God? Does it really bring praises to my God? See, you might have, like for example, imagine we have a lot of money, you think, and uh, if we need to travel to some place, we got uh, many options. We can travel by vehicle, we can travel by local buses, we can travel by plane, we can travel by train, but uh, everything is the same travel. One who is consecrated, how does he practically work his consecration? Instead of spending some uh, thousands of rupees uh, on a plane, you see, or on a super deluxe uh, or a luxurious train, he would try to save some money and travel in a bus or a meaner transport and save a little bit of money and use it for the Lord's sake. That is practically working your consecration. You see, you practically sacrifice. Uh, that's your preference. Uh, nobody has got nothing to hinder with it. That's your right. You can do it. Uh, but that one, you're living it for Christ's sake. Uh, that is practically working. Therefore, uh, Apostle Paul says in Galatians 4.19, uh, I travel so that uh, Christ may be formed in you. You see, that was the effort of Apostle Paul. So, okay. Fifth one. The sixth one. You see? The very important one. After you walk all your talk, God is going to test us whether we really are in truth or not. This is a very, very severe test. Many of them will fall in this test. Now, what is the test? The test is the test of love. That's the first fruits of the Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is not Tongues, miracles. No. What does he say? What does he say, brother? Read brother Moses, brother. Love. Very good. First, uh, First love. Yeah. You see, the fruit of the spirit is love. In that love, you should have joy. In love, you should have peace. In love, you should have long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. You see, all these things should be based on love. You see, without love, there is nothing. Therefore, there are two, three types of love actually. One is filial love, affectionate love, which you have upon brothers and sisters, you see, your own brother or sister. Huh? And uh, you see, uh, that is called as filial love. And, uh, I think we have already read about love, right? Uh, you already read it about love? Yeah. Yeah, filia, eros. Yeah, I already read about this. I think then this class is over for you already. No, 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 no. About love only. About love, good. Okay, brother. So the second type of love is eros love, bodily love, physical love, yes. the love of husband and wife. And the third one is agape, agape love. You see, selfless love. This selfless love only a mother has upon the child. Imagine while playing, the child falls into the well. What will the mother do? She will immediately yes, jump into the well. She would never see if the well, there is water. What is there? 
immediately to rescue the child, immediately she will take risk. That is selfless love. You know, there is a chapter in the Bible completely dedicated for love. We know it very well. That is 1 Corinthians 13 chapter. You see? Huh? Now read with the 1 Corinthians 13 chapter. Kindly open your Bible and read because okay, I don't brother. think it's very clear, very clear here. Hmm. Okay. First, uh, first Corinthians hmm. 13, 1 to 8. Okay, brother. Yeah. Uh, 13, 1 to 8. Okay, I will start reading. Uh, Thy speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have no charity. I became a sounding brass or a tinkling Slamble. Hmm. And though See? I have. See, I speak in various languages. You see, but if I don't have love, I'm just an empty sounding brass. In the school, they use bell no? to ring the bell. Huh? He doesn't know why it's ringing. Just because the watchman is ringing, he will ring. Even if there is nobody in the school, also if the watchman rings, it will ring. Huh? He doesn't know the purpose of it. Huh? Similarly, if we don't have love, we don't have know the purpose, it's a waste. Next one, brother. Second one. Uh. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. Remove mountains? What did Jesus say? If you have faith as this mustard seed, you can tell to the mountains it will move off. That is a small faith that is required here, brother. Even if you have faith, you don't have love, means it is nothing. nothing. Ah, third one. No. And through, I bestow all my good to feed the poor, and through, I give my body to be more brown and have no charity. It profits me nothing. Okay. If I give everything in charity, do a lot of, uh, you see, social work, huh? hospitality work, and give myself to be born. If somebody is coming to hit you, slaughter you, persecute you, and uh, you see, kill you, okay, I'll die for Christ. You may tell, you may die for Christ also. But if there is no love in you, it is of no use. So many people die because of ego. You see, because of stubbornness. No, I don't want to deny Christ. I'll stand for him. Okay, you eat me, you kill me, you burn me, I'll die. But are you doing it for love of Christ or not? Are you doing it for a passion? Are you doing it so that uh, others seeing you may appreciate you? No. You should be doing this because you love Christ. Christ died on the cross not to show some that he was a very great thing, a very great hero. No, he died because he loved us. Same way, even if you are offering everything as a sacrifice, what are we doing? What is our intention behind it? That is mean. Next, brother, verse 4. Charity suffereth long ah, and is kind. See, charity suffereth long. You see, Anda is kind. There was a person known as uh, Socrates. I think you might have heard about him. Socrates was a very, very, very calm man, but he had a very, you see, uh, you see uh, uh, wife, uh, very troublesome wife. And uh, every day she used to scold uh, Socrates, it seems. One day she was so fed up that he began to quarrel with them and uh, keep on speaking. Even then, Socrates did not do anything. He was simply keeping quiet. It seems. She was so fed up, she took a bucket of water and poured upon his head. He simply said, still now it was th thundering, now it began to rain. It seems. So, this is suffering long. And it is yeah. kind. Kind means what? When somebody is coming to your house, they should be warm welcome. Isn't it? You see? Yeah. That is being kind. Next, brother. Huh? Charity invade not. Envy are not. There were two neighbor systems. You see, the two neighbors were so jealous of each other. One day, God decided, Yo, I'm fed up with these guys. So, God appeared to these neighbors and told, it seems, 
See, so he told for both the neighbors. He told, say, whatever you ask, I'll give you. Whatever you want, tell me, I'll give you. But whatever you ask, the double of it, I'll give it to your neighbor. Then God gave him a choice. He said, tell me your request. Then the, these persons that told, oh, your God is very difficult. And because he thought to himself, you know, if, I, if I ask 10 kg of gold, he will get 20 kg of gold. Okay, if I, go, if I ask for a Benz car, he will get two Benz car. Then uh, they decided, it seems, God, please give me one day time. I will ask you tomorrow. God told, okay, come tomorrow. So that day and all, they were very, uh, you say, meditated. Next day they came, it seems. God asked them the same question. Now tell me, what is your request? What do you want? Now remember, whatever you ask, I'll give you the toys of it. Now what did the neighbor uh, ask? God, please pluck out my one eye. That means what? Uh, let my neighbor lose both eyes. That is envy. You see, when something is happening good for others, when something is happening in your stomach, that is envy. That is jealousy. Next, brother. Charity? Huh? Charity valueth not itself. Ah, it is doesn't not speak about of. itself. I am like yeah. this. I am like that. I did so many things. I, I, I. This is the spirit of the devil. Always you should be we, not I. That is, uh, you see, it doesn't speak of itself. We should never speak about ourselves. Others should be speaking about themselves. You know, Christ came from heaven. He was so rich. Bible says that he was so rich. He became poor for our sake. Have you ever studied in the Bible? One place, ever Christ mentioning, you know, I was with God. I was in such a position. You know, what is my strength, power and everything? Did ever Christ use those words, even gave a hint about it? No. That is Christ. Never put forth yourself. Never want it yourself. Next, it is not puffed up. You see, nowadays, if somebody comes to know something, immediately they will get puffed up. They will have a high mind. You know, that's the dangers with the youngsters. Even if they even if you give opportunity to take just a few classes, immediately everything will go up on the red. They'll sit on the Mount Everest on you. You know, that is what uh, is not easily puffed up. Rebiran, Christ was the morning star. Everything was created for Christ, for Christ, by Christ. You see, but even then, he came to the earth, he was never puffed up. People slapped at him, spit at him, tore his clothes. He kept silent. He never was puffed up. But what about Lucifer? When he came to earth, he even wanted to sit up on the throne of God. You see, that is pride. You see, it is not pride. One who has the Holy Spirit, try to control it. You see, it doesn't puff about him. No, my idea, my purpose, my aims. No. Next, brother. Huh? Uh, five. Don't, don't not behave yourself unseemly. Do not behave unseemly. Misbehave. You know, King Saul was there. He misbehaved so much. You know, when God told, don't offer a sacrifice, you should have kept quiet. But he couldn't all control himself. Even before, you see, Samuel came, he offered a sacrifice. And as he as was offering, immediately Samuel came, he could have waited. When God told you to slaughter the Amalekites, you misbehaved. You never obeyed. What did God say? It is not sacrifice. God is saying obedience. God is seeing your obedience sacrifice, not just a sacrifice. Every people can sacrifice. That's what the Bible says. You see, you offer your body to be burnt. It doesn't have love. It is of nothing. It might be some great thing in front of everybody, but in sight of God, it is zero. You see, Saul, once because of his rash oath, you know, what did he do? You know, what did he do? He told everybody not to eat anything until... You see, I tell you, they fought the battle. They were so hungry. They slaughtered all the animals. Even with blood they ate. That was the, you see, worst behavior of uh, 
so this is misbehaving the brethren who are in christ the real brethren i'm telling you the consecrated ones should have this character it doesn't behave themselves in a very awkward manner you see is not the spirit of christ next brother ah only my plan, only my purpose, whatever I say, only those things should be happen. No. What did you say? If any man wants to be my disciple, deny himself, not deny others. Deny yourself first, ours first, whatever is there, that one, keep it aside. All our plans, purpose, we all have so many things, leave it aside. If all those things can't be taken to heaven, you see, then next brother, huh? It is not easily probed. It is easily not provoked. See, they are not short-tempered. Long-tempered. Hmm? Then. Mm -hmm. Think, think and no evil. Think and no evil. Some people know very silent or very observing. But they will keep on thinking evil only. Eh? Your mind will be running evil. Oh, what to do, what bad to do, how to make him fall, how to avoid him, huh? how to misuse him. You see, all these activities. This is all not at the spirit of Christ. Next to the sixth one. Huh? Rejoice not in equity, but rejoice in the truth. Rejoice not in iniquity, but in the truth. My pastor, oh, he's so loving. Oh, yo, yo. He tells me to take communion every week. I will take. Why? Because I love my pastor. What about God? Mm. Eh? What about God? What does the Bible say? He doesn't rejoice in iniquity. No. It is a doctrine which is against the God. Against the Bible. You can't drink of the eh, cup of the Lord and cup of the devil. If you're taking that one, that's the cup of the devil. I'm not telling you particularly. I'm telling generally. If we are taking that cup, we are partaking of the cup of the devil. devil. That is iniquity. Mm. This is the disobedience of like King Saul. You see, it rejoices only in the truth. The Trinity, where is there in the Bible? Huh? The word itself is not there. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three are one, one and the same. How can be one and the three and one and the same? Huh? Can I, my father, my son, all become one together? Ay, what foolish thing. Eh? Unscriptural doctrine today. Eh? Rejoicing in iniquity. Eh? Rejoicing in trinity is uh, rejoicing in iniquity. That is not the truth. Rejoice in the truth. As we hear the truth, we should rejoice in it. We should try to live for it. Next. Huh? Bear all things. Believe all things. Hope all things. Endure all things. Where all things means we'll sit on a table. All our friends will keep on drinking. I will bear, brother, everything. You please keep on drinking. I'll keep silently. That's what the Bible says. No. Psalms 1.1. One, one. What does he say, brother? Psalms 1.1. One, one. Psalms 1.1. One, one. Hmm. Uh, Blessed is the man. Hmm. Open it and read. Okay. You did not go to Sunday school, huh? I I did. You escaped, huh? No, no, I, I did, but no I forgot. Huh? Oh, forgot. I'm sorry. In India, we give all these things by art. Uh -huh. hmm. Read the Psalms one. Blessed is Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm. but stand in the way of sinners. Mm. You see, you should never stand in the way of sinners. All my friends are there walking in the sinful way. I'll just to walk with them, but I don't do any of those things. Means what? Huh? What is it? Doesn't uh, uh, walk in the way of sinners. Next, brother. Huh? Not Sitens in the seat of the 
spoonful ah not even sit along with them on the seat you drink i will eat ha huh? see <laughs> second verse what is it next continue huh? but his delight is in the law of the lord hmm? and in his law does he meditate day Denied. This is believing all things. This is bearing all things. This is hoping all things. This is enduring all things. <coughs> And somebody tempts us, we endure it for Christ's sake. Next brother, continue. Huh? But, uh, read First Corinthians. Charity, charity ah. never fail, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Mm. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Mm. Hmm. sees whether hmm. there be knowledge itself hmm. when is away uh, see now see all these characters we can see in only one person that is jesus christ correct no brother yeah uh, now open first corinthians 13 chapter okay from verse 4 to verse 8 first corinthian 13 chapter verse 4 to verse 8 in that one instead of putting charity you put as jesus and read instead of charity put jesus and read brother from verse 4 jesus suffered long and is kind hmm. jesus even not jesus hmm. valued not itself is not puffed off does not have itself on simply seek not her her not his own is not easily proof provoke thinking no evil rejoice not in iniquity but rejoice in the truth where all things believe all things hope all things endure all things jesus never fail very good brother jesus never fails absolutely it suits him but does it suit us now let us now you put uh, i and read Instead of no, charity, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Me, sir, brother. If I put I, just try and see. Put in green. <laughs> I suffered not. I and suffer. It's kind. I suffer. Uh, I suffered long. Long. Good. No. Okay. Hmm. And it's kind. I even not. I valued not itself. Is not popped off. Does not have itself. Okay. unseemly sick not my own is not easily pro thinking no evil rejoice not in iniquity but rejoice in the truth there all things believe all things hope all things endure all things i never fail i never fail we doubt that one correct now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we have we all have a doubt but uh, that is how we should develop you know by reading all these things we come to know at what condition we are this is the sixth and a very important step brother after that only we can attain the seventh and the final step you know the final step is death and the resurrection once if we die and resurrect uh, and go behind that side of the veil god gives us a crown of life immortality you see that is having a beautiful what uh, divine nature the fresher than a child uh, see greater than all the natures uh, the divine nature of all so faith the truth separation from sin consecration walking as per a consecration love and final death so all these seven dippings are must we may take all the six and leave the seventh we might have love but if you are not faithful to god till our death it is of no use so let us all pray that uh, we might uh, you see attain all this uh, you see likeness of christ uh, so it may be pleasing to our uh, lord uh, okay so may the lord add his blessings to these words